הנושא החם ביותר בתעשיית ההייטק בימים האלה, המחסור בכוח אדם, מי מנצח בו, העובדים, החברות או שניהם, אז הפאנל מתחיל עוד דקה, אתם מוזמנים להיכנס לאולם ואנחנו נתחיל. ואם לא, יש לנו מצלמות. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one of the uh, most talked about issues in uh, tech circles uh, these days is the shortage of skilled men and women power. And this is something that uh, crosses the industries of uh, technology and it, it's a major issue. I don't have to tell you this because everybody who has anything to do with uh, high tech uh, knows that pretty well. Uh, the chairman of this uh, session here is uh, Nathan Natanzon, uh, Ran Natanzon. Good afternoon to you. It, it's been a long day. You know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ran, before we introduce the uh, very distinguished panel here, um, just give me the, the headlines. How bad is the situation in terms, in terms of recruiting in the tech industry? So, I think we are facing a global problem. It's not only an Israeli problem, but the whole world is dealing with a shortage of uh, qualified engineers for the tech industry. And I say, actually, Israel is quite unique in the fact that uh, one in every 10 workers in Israel belongs to the tech industry. It's an important contributor for uh, national income, while almost a quarter of uh, income tax comes from uh, people working in the tech, uh, tech industry, and almost half of the export. So we understand in Israel, the high tech is the growth engine of the, of the whole eco Israeli economy. And when we are facing this global shortage, we are we're trying to find our most innovative solutions for this uh, problem. Right. And we are going to discuss this uh, right now thoroughly. Uh, let's meet our guests. Uh, we'll start on this direction, Orit. Please, a couple words about yourself and your work. Um, so, my name is Orit Tatarski. I'm from the INCD, the Israeli National Cyber Directorate. Um, formerly, uh, I have uh, 25 years of experience in the technological units uh, of the IDF. I, ca I come from R&D roles, and uh, today I'm dealing with the issue, with the as all aspects of the issue that we are uh, discussing The burning here. issue, right. Exactly. Right. Karin? Hi, uh, I'm Karin Meyer Rubinstein, and I am the CEO and the president of IATI, Israel Advanced Technology Industries, which is the umbrella organization of all the high-tech and life science in industries and other uh, advanced technology industries. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon? Good afternoon, Brigadier General in Reserve, Sharon Neer, the former gender advisor to the Chief of Staff, before I was uh, the commander of the C4I in, in the cyber uh, school. Now I'm a lecturer in the in your university, the Reichman University, or Merkaz Ben Tromi, if, uh, as you want to say. Reichman University. Okay. And, uh, and that's, that's for now. All right. Thank you. Uh, Gabi. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gabi, Gabi Marom. Uh, I'm a CEO uh, partner uh, in uh, Ellis Code, uh, leadership for young girls. And uh, former, uh, was in the army, uh, uh, was a uh, commander of cyber school and they have a lot of experience in uh, recruiting uh, young uh, people to army. 
All right, Omri. Uh, you don't need to open anything. Don't, you know, yeah, just, yeah, just like that. So. Is this one working? Okay. So uh, my name is Omri Wexler. Uh, I'm a senior researcher uh, at the Yuval Neyman Workshop for Science, Technology, and Security in Tel Aviv University. Um, and I'm the res one responsible for the cyber project of the workshop. All right. And last but not least, Merav. Thank you, Jakob. Thank you for having me here. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm the CEO of the ITIC Association, which is part of the Manufacturers Association of Israel. We represent more than 1,800 companies and industries in Israel, uh, companies like Intel, Philips, Rad, and others. Okay, thank you, thank you very much all for coming. I'm going to lay out the first question to all of you. This sort of shortage that we're talking about, what, what does it tell you? Um, uh, was there a problem in education and upbringing of the next generation, or is it the technology that just exploded beyond any expectation? What's happening here? We'll start with you, Orit. Uh, I think um, maybe the answer is both, but uh, I do believe that um, the younger generation uh, is not enough uh, uh, educated to this to, to, to this uh, um, but they do they do want to go to tech not industry, all of so them no? uh, maybe later on we'll talk about 50% uh, of them meaning mm. girls which we uh, unfortunately here we have a lot of uh, women uh, but uh, when we look at the industry it's it's the opposite case. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at least from this aspect, I think uh, the problem is uh, education and more. Maybe we will elaborate it about it later. Right. Corinne, what do you say? Uh, where should I start? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have such a huge problem, and if we want to be nice, we can call it a challenge, but I think it's already a problem. Uh, as Ron said, it's a worldwide problem, but you know, we care about what's going on here because in Israel, because uh, we have 45% of the industrial export from uh, high tech and because 25% of the income tax is, pay is paying by the employees in high tech, we are completely reliable on high tech in Israel, so we care about what's going on here. We have a huge, huge problem uh, with regards to uh, HR, with the human, human capital in Israel. It means that uh, we have uh, today uh, 21,000 um, um, open, um, open, uh, openings, openings um, and uh, we cannot find the people uh, to these openings. So uh, we all come together here to uh, solve it and to bring the solutions to the table. Well, we'll but solve still, it here today. Problem. No, no problem. No, no, no doubt. It's solved, right? Yeah, so solved. It's case solved. Yes. Women's power. Uh, right. Uh, Sharon? As, uh, as they say before, I think that it's a huge problem. And when we come to solve a huge problem, we have to go to the root of the problem. And I think that the root of the problem, first of all, is that we're, we have a growing and a growing and a growing fast and fast and very fast technologies and capabilities, new, new technologies and capabilities to the, to the field. And uh, generally speaking, the, the manpower and the people uh, uh, don't come. And uh, I think that the, the people uh, don't come, first of all, because we don't know how to train them. Uh, we start, we have to, to check ourselves about the traditional uh, uh, way of training because it doesn't work. Because if it's growing and growing exponentially, we have to, to think about the way we train maybe OJT training or things like that, but now we train and we even know, don't know what to train for because the profession, we didn't characterize the profession. That's the first uh, problem. The second uh, problem, I think that we don't have any choice. We have to exhaust the potential of people better mm. because now if we just use uh, half of the potential, we didn't use minority uh, uh, groups, we didn't use women enough, we didn't uh, educate our women, our girls, 
to go to, to, to learn uh, uh, things like uh, uh, computers. And this is the, the, the really problem that we have to, to think out of the box about this uh, situation. So, Gabi, you mentioned young girls before. Yes. How young should we start then? Uh, I agree totally with uh, Sharon that uh, it's an educational problem. Uh, the girls and the boys in the early uh, ages are uh, defined by self, by, by colors. Boys are blue and girls are pink. And uh, mostly the parents and the society give them, <laughs> and mostly the parents and society give them this uh, 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 agenda. Another thing, in textbooks in uh, school, uh, girls, uh, there is a traditional uh, roles for um, for uh, boys and for girls, and even for their parents. The father is working out of school, uh, out of uh, home, and uh, the mother do something more traditional. Another thing is uh, uh, that uh, when you are going to school and you're looking who is uh, learning uh, uh, sciences, you see the there are many boys and very little girl uh, amount. And then you will ask them what happened, why did you choose it? And the boys are very, very uh, uh, experienced and know uh, how to uh, manage uh, the computer and how to manage uh, uh, physics. And the girls are uh, very uh, uh, shy and don't know uh, what to do. And when uh, the teacher is asking a, a question, so the boys are immediately raised their hand, and the researchers show that uh, when uh, the teacher will hesitate for 10 seconds and give them 10 seconds to think, there will happen something very interesting. The boys will lower their hand, and the girls are going to raise their hand because the girls are a little bit hesitate and don't. And if they are not sure, they are not uh, given the right answer. They not. Put in her, their so, heads. so you need you need to educate the teachers actually. Right? It's called perfectionism. Um, Omri, yes. Give me your input. What is the root of this problem? Well, um, I think the the most underlying problem that we have here. I mean, the reason why this panel even uh, gathered itself here today is our growing reliance on on technologies in general and on digital technologies in particular. Um, basically, the, the more we base our economy and, our, and, the tra and trade and social interaction, social life, national security on these technologies, and especially I come from the world of cyber, so I can only speak for like, cyber professions, um, cyber skills, uh, although some of what I'm about to say is also relevant uh, for, for um, technological workforce as well. But I think that the more we base our lives on these technologies, the more the demand for, these, uh, for that uh, wor uh, workforce is going to increase. Plus, of course, the, the lack of representation of, of uh, major parts of the public is also very, a very essential problem. I mean, women are 50% of the public. Then you have also, um, let's say, the people of color or, or uh, minorities that are not participating as well. And that offense that, that really creates a gap in the pool of potential workforce. Yes, so these right. two are my, my reasons. Uh, Merav? Yes, I think it comes from a few, uh, several uh, uh, issues. First of all, it comes because um, the corona crisis that we've seen for the last two years has grown the dependency of the companies over digital infrastructure and also over hybrid network. People started working from home, and uh, there's a lot of investments coming to Israel, so there's a lot of need for human resources in Israel. And um, companies, and if, if I'm representing the companies uh, in the IT Association, this is 90% of the IT companies are more than 370,000 workers are working in the manufacturing industry, not in the startups, okay? So we are lacking those uh, people and, uh, in the workforce, and this is a huge problem. It is the number one uh, subject when talking to customers when I meet them. Um, on the other hand, as Sharon said, we are not incorporating enough the minorities, women, youth, 
ultra-Orthodox and uh, Arabs in the industry. So if we are looking at the demography of Israel in the, in the few years, we are seeing that Arabs and the ultra-Orthodox will dominate, will be more than 30% of the population. So we need to give those minority the chance to enter uh, the workforce, and it starts in kindergarten, of course. Everybody needs to study coding uh, lectures, needs to study STEM. Um, uh, science, uh, mathematics, engineering, and other uh, issues that can help them inside those. Uh, yeah. It started uh, long before the COVID, okay? <laughs> the COVID just enhanced uh, it. I think most of it started long before high tech. You know it what started I mean? long ago. It started, um, let's say, uh, we identified uh, this phenomena like around six years ago, okay, when it was obvious that there are enough employees. But then, you know, it's simple just to say it. You know, we have more and more companies. The, the demand is growing from day to day for good workers, for high level uh, um, uh, human capital. Uh, so we need more and more employees and we just don't know where to bring them for because the academia does not provide enough uh, people. Um, we, don't, we didn't take care, we didn't take a good care of uh, the minorities, as the people said here. And, and now it's the time, but still uh, we have a lot of people also outside of Israel um, and that uh, we can bring back uh, to Israel. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's the relocation people, it's the Chokashvut uh, people, it's the special expert. Yeah, so I don't want to make this entirely and only an Israeli uh, discussion here, but I, I, I uh, will I'm say sorry. though that uh, when I refer to before high tech is that I've been hearing for years that science classes are shrinking and uh, girls uh, don't like uh, to go to uh, science uh, um, uh, schools or uh, mathematics and, and, and stuff like that. So the, the, the problem is beyond what we are having right now, right? It's a fundamental uh, issue that has to be solved. Um, we said, said it uh, from the b basic grounds of it. And uh, it will be only solved by a holistic solution of uh, taking everybody around the table um, short term and long term. Short term is the training, you know, in, in the big picture is the training and everybody's talking about it, but the long term is, is, is important as well and the long term is dealing with the children 6 to 18 uh, and we identified it like six years ago then, then, because then we started with the Bennett, with the Prime Minister who was the Minister of Education back then. We started the biggest Olympic uh, for cyber Mm -hmm. Six years ago, six years ago, with 500,000 uh, uh, pupils, and now we are starting to see the result. But it's taking time, so that's why we have to divide it to short term and long term. Yes, I think that now uh, I want to continue from uh, from the point to end because I think that now it's the time for ecosystem, another ecosystem, ecosystem that uh, involved the academy, the the schools, the IDF. The uh, industry, all of them uh, th uh, have to think about this special problem because six years ago we have grown and grown and grown in the cyber industry and uh, the, 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 digi the digital transformation uh, of the application, everything, it's another field that grow and grow and all of that uh, demand us for the, the, the most important things is the, the manpower. We can do uh, we can't do anything without people. People are the key to, to success in this uh, right, but uh, field. But it, it is surprising, though, Nathan. Nathan, I keep calling you Nathan. Run, Nathan Zom. Uh, uh, it's been a long day. I say it again. Uh, you know, the Jewish mother uh, used to want her son or daughter to be a lawyer or a doctor. Okay, that changed years ago. All right. Then uh, somehow, I think back in the 70s, it was okay to go to the computer science faculty, uh, not, the, not necessarily to be a lawyer, right? And you have uh, uh, many kids growing up uh, looking at all these very successful companies. So where's the problem? You need to convince them? They want to go there. But we need to create access to these kids. And, and I would like to add, we were speaking of how to realize the potential of engineers completely so. 
some of my colleagues here spoke about the, the different sectors. Some of them talk about the uh, uh, presentation. I would I, I like to add also the periphery. So in periphery areas, and it's a global problem, we want tech and innovation and engineers to come not only from Tel Aviv or central Israel, but from also north of Israel and central center Israel and south of Israel. This is a global problem. So how do we create excellent centers, not only in the big cities, in the center of each country, but how do we spread out innovation to bring it to all parts of, uh, of the country? And, and the solution is, is to create access. It can be access by creating employment centers. It can be spreading out the education. It could be by training, training kids outside central Israel. But bring it, we have to understand that uh, if you want to uh, raise the GDP of all Israel, you can't leave anyone behind. Everybody should join into this uh, tech revolution. Ulrike, you want to say something? Um, I think that we are uh, doing a lot of efforts in the, those vectors that um, were mentioned here. Uh, just to give some examples, we mentioned the periphery, so uh, Unit 8200 already identified uh, the, the untapped potential in the periphery 11 years ago, about 11 years ago and opened the uh, Makshimim project. And when they started, they uh, checked out and they saw that only 3%, about 3% of the unit was from the periphery. Today, 11 years later, it's about more than a third. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it can be done. Uh, we also, um, about three years ago, opened um, a joint venture with the Rashi Foundation, a project for girls. Uh, it was mentioned here that uh, girls are uh, intimidated when they are not in their equal group. Uh, so we opened a project very based on Makshimim, which is called Mamriot. Uh, we started with the uh, 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 national uh, Orthodox girls. Uh, if you think about it, there are about 6,000 girls each year who are listed to national service. None of them until that point were uh, at uh, technological jobs. Now, three, three years later, the, fir the first uh, cycle was uh, ended last, uh, this, this summer. Uh, you can find uh, the, um, the girls who graduated from the program in the uh, security community in technological uh, roles. Uh, and we started there and we elaborated it. Uh, and this year, now, we are opening about more 25, uh, in 25 other points. So things can be done, uh, not only uh, for the longer term, uh, but also uh, for uh, the, the, to, to close the current uh, gap. If we're dealing with children, then as, when, as mentioned, we're looking at the future. Uh, if we're dealing with adults, then we're dealing with here and now. Um, we also have, uh, we also done a great pilot with the uh, Lev Academy Center in uh, 2018 with two groups of men and women ultra-orthodox uh, which graduated uh, from their bachelor degree in computer science with excellence and we trained them to become a cyber specialist and it's amazing to see a guy who started out this route uh, not only not knowing mathematics, basic mathematics and English, but sometimes that doesn't speak Hebrew because he speaks only Yiddish. And we have now an example of one of them who is a malware an analyst in one of the right. big companies in Israel. How do you program in Yiddish? That's, um... <laughs> and we, we hope to uh, start a very big project now uh, in the coming year, since now we have a uh, you know, government budget. Uh, I think to solve this problem, as mentioned, like cyber is a team game, to solve this problem, it's also a team game, and you have to partner with, you know, government ministries, uh, uh, the industry, the philanthropy, uh, the army, uh, etc., etc. And uh, if we join together, then maybe we can get some solutions. And call for action. I call for each one of you who have 
any idea or uh, wants to suggest a project to come to talk to me. Okay, great. Um, Omri, uh, so until all of that happens, it will take some time. Now there's a, there's a problem. How do companies uh, deal with that? They have to function here and they are desperate for workers and some, some of the cases we're hearing about are ridiculous, right? True. Um, I think that we have to distinguish between, um, uh, let's say, solutions at the level of the organizations themselves, like individual uh, solutions, and on the other hand, uh, from national initiatives. Um, so organizations, we do, start, we do start to see that organizations are um, enabling more internal uh, training, which was something that in, in a long line of surveys that were conducted in recent years, um, poten uh, potential uh, workforce or young workforce without um, uh, experience actually raised this problem that organizations, uh, employers are demanding too much experience and are not um, enabling internal uh, training. So first of all, organizations uh, start enabling internal trainings. Uh, more, more and more of them are um, outsourcing, are moving to the cloud in order to kind of um, uh, take away all these little uh, mundane tasks, um, IT tasks, information uh, security tasks. We see more uh, automation, for example. And then you have the national initiatives. Um, some of them are uh, their, their aim is to, to kind of dissolve this uh, black cloud called cyber because, you know, people on the street, if you ask them um, what, would man, what would one need in order to become a lawyer or an accountant, they will tell you, you need to go and do your, your law studies and, and stuff like that. But for them, cyber is kind of like some sort of a black cloud. You can't see through it, despite the fact that you have clear, uh, well, there's an attempt to make it clearer, all these careers and different uh, professions and sub-professions inside. So many national initiatives, we can see the, the, the things that the cyber directorate did here in Israel. Um, also, for example, you have in the US, uh, you have um, the NICE initiative, uh, the uh, National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. Um, of the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST. Um, all these initiatives are, are basically the, 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 the objective, the goal is to, to clarify all the uh, different professions, different skills that are needed. Um, other initiatives are, are uh, aimed at uh, increasing representation. Uh, a, good, a good example is the Department, the, the U.S. Department of Defense, uh, they have this initiative, um, the Cybersecurity Education Diversity Initiative, where they provide funding and, and uh, education materials to colleges and universities that were traditionally um, working with uh, weakened or, or lower social economic populations, such as uh, black commu communications, Hispanic, etc. Um, and then you have a problem of, of the public uh, sector versus the private sector because both of them are competing uh, over a very limited pool of, of potential workforce. And in that sense, the public sector is facing uh, severe problems because they cannot offer the same um, salaries and the same uh, working conditions. And also in that direction, some, some government uh, agencies are trying to solve this. I think the clearest, the recent, most recent um, solution is the, is the uh, cybersecurity talent management system of the American Department of Homeland Security, where they try to cut through bureaucracy um, to uh, increase the salaries, enable more solutions for self-growth as an alternative for salaries, uh, for higher salaries, of course. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very comprehensive... Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you, uh, Mirav, uh, what's happening meanwhile? Um, salaries are going through the roof, incentives, options, I don't know what, and they, they still have problems 
recruiting people? Yes, first of all, as Omri said, are doing, uh, companies are doing now internal uh, uh, teaching of the workers to bring them to, to new uh, um, uh, places they can learn. But, uh, and they're also going to, and to try and work with minorities, to incorporate minorities in, inside the organization. Just uh, yesterday, we did a conference between um, the organizations, because organization and 20 organizations of youth organizations to do a matching and to see how we can enter those youth into the industry. Another thing is the dollar, which is very problematic today. The strengthening of the shekel makes it very risky for companies to work in Israel today. So when I'm meeting companies that they are speaking about moving their core businesses to other countries, which is, 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 it better in, is it better in other countries? Well, there are places where the wages of the workers are, are, much, uh, uh, are much better. In East Europe, and, and you know, they, even the Israeli engineer is becoming more pricer than the American one. So, yes, they are looking at uh, the bottom line and thinking what they can do. And where that's they bad, because if uh, because it, industries it, go out it, here... It closes yeah. the opportunities for people to work here in Israel. So it's a very important issue today in the industry. Right. So uh, what do we need to do, Gabi? Uh, we believe that uh, the right age to start uh, learning uh, computers is uh, nine years old. Uh, when nine they, years old? This, yes, somebody said yes. this is nine years too late. Yes, <laughs> because the children, uh, they know uh, to, to read. They know a little bit English. Uh, we are starting with... Uh, a scratch, which is a very uh, learn, a very easy to, to move the blocks and to make a, a movie and to make uh, some game, and it's very uh, colorful and children likes it. And uh, the girls, after they play in this, uh, they uh, are going to learn Python. And in uh, sixth grade, they are knowing Python, and uh, they uh, afterwards uh, does uh, they learn a. Uh, um, CSS, and uh, we have a, a, a how collaboration. Many, how many kids actually do this in Israel now? Uh, we have in uh, a, a, about a thousand uh, of girls, and uh, they, uh, we have a collaboration with, uh, a Cam uh, with the University of Cambridge and uh, Howard. So uh, they are in age of uh, 15, 16, <coughs> they uh, know uh, they, they are engineers. Last time I checked, and I'm not sure about that, I didn't find this in the schools, in the education system here. Yes, we How are come? Trying. This is a startup nation. In uh, seventh grade, uh, they are learn a little bit uh, scratch, but uh, I think it's uh, very late because girls, now our girls, when they are going to junior high, all of them uh, walk to science, take science, and they went, you are looking for the, our uh, trainers. Our trainers are uh, uh, high school uh, girls. They all came to, they now are going to uh, technologies uh, in, in the army, in the technology unit, all of them. So mm -hmm. we are very proud of what we are doing. You want to say something? Yeah, that uh, research shows that in order to, you know, attract uh, kids to this uh, area, then you need to create within them, first of all, the motivation and the interest, and second of all, the uh, self uh, sense of capability, that they, are, they believe that they can do it. And the best point to do it is to, to start in the fifth grade. Uh, and uh, we hope that next week, next year, maybe we will also, we're trying to initiate now another program for fifth and sixth grade. Also, I can mention that maybe you have read uh, in the last days about um, the decision of the government uh, to um, uh, assist the move of the IDF to the Negev. Yeah. Uh, there's a big uh, government decision, and one of the uh, decisions in this decision is to uh, build a, a, a new cyber school in Be'er Sheva uh, of of you know uh, middle school and high school six years school um, it's uh, the responsibility of the ministry of education and we are at the INCD 
uh, mentioned there as their partners. And Are we? Uh, but I want to ask you, uh, Corinne, um, you know, th it's an industry, uh, it's so important to Israel. Uh, it, it's not a social tool now to move industries to the Negev and back and forth. I'm just trying to make, uh, you know, the counterpoint. Uh, bring people to work. Actually, you, you, first of all, to answer your previous, previous question, uh, you are absolutely right about, you know, we are the innovation nation and what's going on, you know, how can it be that uh, there is no uh, um, um, computer science studies at school, you know, right. elementary Look school. Look what happens in China. So let's just call by, it. By age nine. Uh, so let's uh, just call it, you know, it's a failure of the government. So uh, let's we we'll just put it on the table now. We we, we know it. Uh, I'm talking to um, to uh, the, the minister of uh, innovation all the time, to the prime minister, to uh, to the innovation authority, of course, and to the minister of education. Uh, that's why we started, as I said, six years ago, to push from the age of six to put the Cyber Olympics into the into the um, um, cu curriculum. Um, and we did it, and every year there is, there are, you asked it, so I'm tell, giving you the number, 500,000 pupils who are competing in this uh, Cyber Olympics, and everybody, n n n you, you know this program, but it's not enough. It's not enough because there is an agreement uh, that we made uh, between IATI and the Ministry of Education when Bennett was, a, was, was the Minister of Education, and you know, we just have to like fulfill this agreement to put more and more studies to put to put more and more studies into the curriculum vita of the curriculum of the primary school. Now, um, you always you also asked about um, the salaries and about people who moves and uh, if I understood correctly or uh, your what you said every year. Uh, three, uh, 3,500 people move to uh, co company to company. Um, it brings unst instability. Uh, it brings uncertainty. Uh, it, ra it, it raises, of course, the salaries, like uh, to the huge amount of salary. It bothers a lot uh, the HR, the HRVP, the HRVP of the big, of the big companies, and they are co uh, worried and co very much concerned about it. So a uh, solution will, must be found top down and bottom up. We can talk about both, but I will say again, it will start in the um, um, integration uh, between the industry and the government, uh, in, and it will continue in the integration in the government itself, which is not integrated now. Okay? Well, um, when is the government integrated? And, and the third, yes, and the third, part of the triangle is the academia, of course, of course the military, but the academia. Um, a lot of people go to the academia. It's not true what they said, that people don't want to go. It's full. The academia is full of engineering people, uh, but we need more places. And the content should be modified to update the, the, the content of, in the academia. And the other thing that, you know, the, the, the Israeli companies and the uh, unicorns and other big companies will tell you no. I want to say the F word, but I will not say it. Uh, who gives a F about the academia? Okay, we want to go with training, four to six months training uh, to take people that uh, studied uh, psychology, economy, etc. Very, very high level people, but they were not in the technology. Move them in four to six months to a, to a high tech. So it's both, it's academia. On one hand, and it's the training of like short-term uh, training from the other. It's a fight also in the world. Uh, do you want your children to go to academia to do a BA? Maybe not. It's, uh, the, the world is changing. Right. Uh, Ron, um, is it possible that the startup nation doesn't have really a strategy for educating uh, tech people? Maybe our strategy is no strategy. But I, th I think we, we go together and, you know, the and government also is like a big ship. It takes time to turn it around to the right direction. It needs effort and time. And I think it's slowly moving in, in the right direction. It's maybe taking longer than we presumed. But still, I think the, uh, the public-private uh, partnership is the key for uh, success. Working together as an ecosystem, each side contributing um, it, from from its side, speaking of uh, government, uh, 
as I see it at least, uh, the government role is dealing with market failure. And we see here a few market failures, maybe in education, um, in the capacity of the education system in the programs in, in which we have to hand the solution. And the second thing is to um, cut, uh, cut in the red tape and lower barriers. So it could be barriers for people uh, um, to study. It could be also to bring some foreign talent uh, into, into Israel and we see certain changes such as uh, um, the startup visa that uh, actually made it easier for the large uh, companies to bring in uh, foreign talent if it's specific talent that's needed. So in general, I would say- This is when the kind, we the kind of work, visas that made Israelis go elsewhere, but- uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, but here I think it, it's good as an example. In six days, you can receive this visa. And I think together the solution is working together as an ecosystem. Right. Yaakov, if in your permission, I have to add something about the Ministry of uh, the, the System of Education and the Ministry of Education. Um, I do agree that you know there's a need to do a lot in this area, but I have to mention that now I'm a member in a committee of the Ministry of Education dealing, just started dealing with the uh, uh, all education, uh, technological education system in Israel, and I really hope that. Uh, it will bring some fruits and some change to the system. And also, um, there's a big challenge if you think about it, because if you're a very good engineer or if you have very good engineering skills in computer science, uh, let alone cyber, then you have such good opportunities in the market to get such a high salary. Why would you, unless you are, you know, uh, really minded and, uh, and have high values, why would you go to be a teacher? Uh, the salary that you will get, you cannot compare it. So there's a big challenge there uh, and it's not very easy to solve. Yeah, yeah, it's not. I think the government is seeing that uh, the issue is, a very, is an issue with the crisis and uh, is thinking about the short-term solutions by bringing foreign peoples and also on the long solutions, long-term solution, because just this month, the Ministry of Science and Ministry of Education announced that it's going to promote a plan to uh, enter uh, coding uh, learning to kindergartens, and there's also a allocation of uh, budgets for this thing. I think that the problem, the major problem now, the crisis is with the shekel, the strategy of the shekel. We are working with the Bank of Israel, and we are working with uh, another economics, uh, of course, uh, authorities, to start and, and bring a solution for the shekels, because if we will see those companies going outside of Israel, then there won't be any workers which will be needed in the industry. So this is the main thing now that the government should look at and give a solution for. Right. I agree with, I agree with Mirab. The shekel is a big problem. The Manufacturer Association is doing a good work in, a, in a bringing the solution to, this, to the table for the currency, uh, pr um, it's not a problem, but the, the, the currency uh, issue. And, um, you know, we, we export, we, um, the ITEC uh, industry is a big, big export. On the other hand, uh, the investment comes in dollars, the salaries are paying in shekels. So it's a big thing the Manufacturer Association do by uh, bringing the solutions to this problem. Right. Um, any other remarks before we wrap up? Thank you very much, and uh, thank you. Uh, this is it, uh, actually, for the first day of uh, this uh, conference. We'll see you here tomorrow morning with more cybersecurity, homeland security, innovation, and plenty more. So have a good evening. Thank you.